So here is another uh, limit problem that we're going to try to tackle using the definition of the limit. Um, so typically when you're trying to do a limit problem using the, using the formal definition, you start with a little bit of scratch work, right? So you come over here and you say, all right, what's our scratch work? Well, remember that the, the setup here is somebody's going to give us epsilon and given that epsilon, we need to find this delta so that if x minus 2 is less than delta in absolute value, then it's going to follow that f of x, which is x squared minus 4, is less than epsilon. So frequently what you do here is you, you look at this difference. You look at the f of x minus l. So remember that's what we have here, right? This is, this is f of x. This is L. <coughs> and, and generally what the goal is, is you're trying to figure out in this f of x minus L difference, where is the dependence on the x minus c difference, right? The x minus 2 in this case. So we say, so can we kind of get an x minus 2 sitting in here somehow? And of course we can because we know that... We know that we can take x squared minus 4, and we can factor that as a difference of squares. So we can write this as x minus 2 times x plus 2, right? Remembering that if you have the absolute value of a product, you can write that as the product of the absolute values. So I can write that as a product of two absolute values, okay? And the key here is that we know this part, well, we can make that less than delta. And we can make delta whatever we want as long as it's a positive number. Okay? So we have some control here. Right? So here's a part we have direct control over because that's the part that we're going to make less than delta and then we can make delta to be however small we need it to be. But then there's this other part here that we don't have sort of immediate control. Right? We're not quite sure what to do with the x plus 2, right? So I can't, there's no obvious immediate comparison between x minus 2 and x plus 2, okay? But what you can do here is you can say, all right, um, remember that if x minus 2 is less than delta, that's going to imply that x minus 2 is between minus delta and delta. And so that in turn implies that 2 minus delta is less than x less than delta um, plus 2. And, and more to the point, we want an x plus 4 here, or sorry, x plus 2. So if, rather than adding 2 all the way across, let's add 4, right? So we x plus 2 in the middle, and now this 2 becomes a 4 and a 4, okay? So that tells me that x plus 2 is somewhere between 4 minus delta and 4 plus delta, right? So x plus 2 is somewhere around 4 is basically the idea. And so now we say, okay, we can make delta, you know, as small as we want. So in particular, we could at least make it smaller than 1, right? So if, uh, so we can say, okay, if, if delta is, is let's say, equal to 1, we get that x plus 2 is between 3 and 5, okay? And you can see that if you chose a smaller delta, this is, the 3 and the 5 are both going to get closer to 4, so we'd be narrowing the gap, right? So we're, we're being pretty conservative here. We're, we're allowing a fairly wide spread for for values. So x plus 2 is somewhere between 3 and 5, right? But in particular, it can't be any bigger than 5. And so with that assumption, we could come back to here and say, okay, well, we've chosen this delta so that this part is less than 5. This part is less than delta. So overall, the whole thing 
would be less than delta times five, right? And we say, okay, but we want that to be less than epsilon, right? Or we could even go with less than or equal because we already have the strict inequality here, right? So in fact, we could take this to be uh, not just less than, but actually equal to epsilon. And that tells us what delta has to be, right? So if, if five delta is equal to epsilon, then this says that I need delta to be, well, less than or equal to epsilon over five. Okay, so now we're ready to actually write up an argument here, to write up a proof to show that this works. So the way you write this up is you start, so this first line in any one of these is always something along the lines of let epsilon be given. And we've done all this work over here that we kind of, you know, we, we somehow keep this under the table, but we, we need it and we're going to, use this to inform our choice of delta, and then we're going to show that that choice works, okay? So we notice that there are actually two things I need to know about delta. Uh, I need it to be no bigger than one, right? Because if delta were bigger than one, then this x plus two could get bigger than five, and that would throw off this estimate. So delta has to be less than or equal to one to make sure that x plus two is smaller than five. On the other hand, it has to be less than or equal to epsilon over five in order to make this part work. So if we want to make sure that delta is less than or equal to both of those things, what we do is we take it to be the smaller of the two. Okay? So we can say the following. Let's consider delta to be the minimum of epsilon over 5 and 1. Okay? So we've made our choice of delta, and now we need to show that it works. So what we can do is we can say that since delta is less than or equal to 1, well, okay, we know, I guess I need one more. I've, I've forgotten one step, right? I need to consider this delta. Uh, so now let's suppose that the absolute value of x minus 2 is at most delta, right? We, we want to make this assumption and show that this is our conclusion, okay? So with that assumption, because we're assuming that x minus 2 is less than delta in absolute value, and we're assuming that delta is no more than 1, that means we know that x minus 2 It has to be less than 1 in absolute value, right? Because it's less than delta, and delta is less than or equal to 1. Okay, well, what does that tell me? Well, that tells me that minus 1 is less than x minus 2 is less than 1, which implies that if I add 4 to everything, 3 is less than x plus 2 is less than 5, right? Um, so x plus 2 is between 3 and 5. In particular, it's positive, right? Because um, it's bigger than 3. Uh, that's going to be relevant because we have this absolute value here that we want to make sure we've accounted for. Okay. Now, since delta is also less than or equal to epsilon over 5, we have that the absolute value of x squared minus 4, which is equal to the absolute value of x minus 2, times x absolute value of x plus 2, is less than, so x minus 2 is less than delta. x plus 2, from what we did up here, is less than 5. Okay, and 5 delta, well, 5 delta is less than or equal to Epsilon, and that's what we needed to show.